Uh, where are we? Chronicles, right? Good. Uh, verse 22, we'll read until um, chapter 36. We shall read. The Bible says that in the first year, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and putting also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyprus, ah, sorry, Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth has the Lord of heavens given me, and he has charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah, who is there among you all his people. The Lord his God be with him. And the Lord go up. And the Lord let him go up. God is good. Um, I think we'll read it only if we will not get into Ezra now. We'll read Ezra a bit later. We'll read until verse 4. Ezra 1, 4. It says, Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord of the mouth of Jeremiah may be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout the kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? He, his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord, God of Israel. He is God, which is in Jerusalem. Verse 4. And whosoever remains in any place where he sojourns, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Today we are doing the power of decreeing under the anointing. Amen. And I want to introduce it because you're going to enter into, as I said, you're doing you do a lot of warfare. So we will enter into a time to also um, learn about, of course, breakthroughs and praying for breakthroughs and all those things. Amen. We're going to get into a time in the next few weeks to learn about breakthroughs and breakouts. Hallelujah. What's the difference and all those things. So that's why we are studying today, breaking it, um, decreeing under the anointing. Can we pray? Let us pray. This is God's word for me. It is alive and true and sharper than any two-edged sword. I believe this word is changing my life today. Holy Spirit, give me the ability to receive my Rema word today and the alertness to perceive the revelation in your word for me and the strength to be a doer of the word. In Jesus' name, Amen. hallelujah. Amen. You may grab a chair. You know, I'll tell you something very funny. That the Holy Spirit challenged me many years ago. Which I believe strongly when I read the Bible every time. God is good. I once went to, 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 um, to a prayer meeting. Um, um, some of you have been there before. Anyway, the guy who was leading the prayers told guys to open a scripture. He never actually he saved the scripture. Then people reacted. Amen. Those of you who ever went to Vincentian prayers at any time. Amen. He used to say Psalms 47.1. Remember? I will open it what it says. Psalms 47.1. What does he say? Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with voice of triumph. And this, uh, the minister will stand and say Psalms 47.1. And he said that, and everyone would clap and shout. He just said, Psalms 47.1. And I asked God one day, what about John 3.16? Hallelujah. What is the action for John 3.16? Amen. And that is when the revelation came to me that every word in the, in the Bible is doable. Every word is doable. Now, today we are talking about decreeing under the anointing. Cyrus, the king of Persia, a pagan king, makes a decree by the Holy Spirit. Amen. But to fulfill the prophecy of Jeremiah, meaning Jeremiah had given a prophecy. What prophecy was this that Jeremiah had given? Please, 
The prophecy of Jeremiah in Jeremiah 29. Eh? To prosper of the 70 years. Yes. 70 years of exile. So 29, that's the prophecy. So Jeremiah 29, the 70 years have come to an end. Now, what actions have made the king of Persia to make this decree? It's because Jeremiah gave a prophecy in Jeremiah 29. Said you will be in exile for 70 wonderful years. You will be there. Hallelujah. Nothing will change. Don't believe it's changing. Hallelujah. For I know the plans I have for you. You know the text. Then Daniel begins to read and study scrolls and Daniel finds this prophecy. And Daniel gets into a season of fasting and praying because of that prophecy of Jeremiah. When Daniel begins to pray, what happens? The Lord stirs up Cyrus to make the decree. Am I making sense? So Cyrus making that decree, which is monumental in bringing the Israelites back to Jerusalem, which is monumental in changing the, the path they were on, is based on a prophetic word and is based on prayer. Hallelujah. Don't underestimate those two. If you have a prophecy over your life and you have a prayer, those two are very powerful things. God is good. Now, for Cyrus to make this decree, the anointing of the Lord had to be on Cyrus. Because Cyrus is making a decree telling his slaves, you will go back. Number one. Number two, you will have money. Amen. Number three, you have got favor. Cyrus is making a decree of a people that have been his slaves about rebuilding and restoring them. Don't underestimate the power of prayer. Don't underestimate the power of prayer. Prayer can make somebody who does not know you to make a decision that favors you. Hallelujah. Prayer can move someone in the Netherlands to make a decision that impacts your life here. Because Jeremiah, I mean, Daniel makes a prayer and the prayer turns a pagan to fulfill the work of God. So if you understand prayer and you understand the word of God, all things are possible. Now, Cyrus is an interesting fellow because to decree under the anointing, you must have the anointing. Now, biblically, what on Asamanga, Cyrus is a shadow of Christ. Hallelujah. Cyrus is a shadow of Christ. Give me Isaiah 45. Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Yes. In if Zuri Kwana teenagers. Hallelujah. And now their voice breaks. God is good. Amen. <laughs> yeah. So here he says, that said the Lord God who is anointed to Cyrus. Meaning Cyrus has been anointed by God whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him. So the anointing of God gives Cyrus the power to be able to subdue nations. Hallelujah. The anointing of God gives Cyrus the authority of our nations because Cyrus says this, all the nations of the earth are under me. This is a pagan. How much more you? God is good. So Cyrus is the anointed one. The Bible says this. Now God is telling us. Now look at the story. Jeremiah makes a prophecy. 70 years before Cyrus comes. Daniel is at the palace. Daniel has the privilege to study. Daniel reads the prophecy. Then Daniel chooses to pray about it. Because a prophecy peer requires a level of prayer. He prays about it. When Daniel prays for the prophecy, does Daniel know it is Cyrus who will fulfill it? Him, he's praying for what Jeremiah prophesied. The Lord is the one concerned with the logistics. Now, here is what is beautiful. When Cyrus is making the decree, no one is knowing what anointing is on Cyrus. Now, Isaiah 45, the Lord is revealing to us the anointing he has placed on Cyrus. Listen to this. Cyrus, I'm saying, I declare. Now, why does he declare? This, the Bible says, is number one. The, the right hand of God is on him. Are we together? Hallelujah. The right hand of God is him. To do what? To subdue nations before him. Meaning no nation had power over Cyrus because the anointing of God was on him. The same way in your life, no nation can stand before you if the anointing of God is over your life. Are you anointed? 
Are you anointed? It says this, and I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two gates and the gates shall not be shut. God is saying this, that I will the anointing that is on Cyrus that I have put on him, other kings will do the work I have said. He's talking about gates. I want to preach about this today. He's talking about gates. Meaning that, and remember it's all small K, including Cyrus. He's talking about the kings, about gatekeepers. And he's saying the anointing of Cyrus, I will ensure that the kings before him out of fear will open the gates and they'll not be shut. Meaning whatever Cyrus requires, the anointing will provide. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't underestimate when you say you are anointed by the Holy Spirit. You are not to be terrorized. You are not to be terrorized. You are above terrorism. You are the terrorist of the terrorist. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. When do You know those Mombasa buses, you remember them? Coast bus, marsh, nini. Do you ever know what was behind? One was called We Are the Leaders. The other one called Imandikwa. Eh? We lead others for us. Then another said, We lead the leaders. <laughs> God is good. Because you have to understand this. He's saying this. Cyrus believes when he's saying this. As much as Persia was a strong kingdom, Cyrus knows every king is below him. That is the power of the anointing. Give me verse 2. I know you love verse 2. I'll go before you, the Lord says, and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Who is doing this? Who is doing this? God. Because of what? Because of what? Anointing. Next verse. And I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, which call you by name, am the God of? So God is saying, even what is hidden, what is unknown, what can't be seen, because of the anointing, it shall be found. Hallelujah. No command, even when we are praying today, we say, whatever is hidden, by the anointing, it shall be found. Wherever something is fighting your life, if it is hidden, by the anointing, it shall be found in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are decreeing today that nothing shall be hidden from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord's arm, the Lord's eyes will travel every realm, every dimension, every timeline and find anything that the devil is using against you in the name of Jesus. We will not perish because we don't know. God is good. We serve a God who knows all things. And because he knows all things, you are deploying every resource available that is given unto us by God. Because by the anointing, we have the power. God is good. God is good. And why? Cyrus decrees. Cyrus speaks, then he writes. And the commander, when we are saying that God reveal, you speak with your words. You make a decree. Give me Job 22, 28. There's something powerful. Not everyone can decree. Hallelujah. Not everyone can decree. A decree is not for everyone. He says this. You shall also decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. Eh, unto who? You shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto you and the light shall shine upon your ways. Meaning anywhere there is darkness, anywhere there is that, what is darkness? Darkness is any influence of the prince of darkness. Wherever Lucifer is, there's darkness. That is why you bring things to light. Hallelujah. You know, if you're battling something and you say it, you're delivered 60%. Because you've brought light. People who spend time in bondage is because they don't say they don't say. I was the young man I was telling a few uh, months ago. I told him there is nothing that I have not had in my time in ministry. Absolutely nothing. You can't surprise me. Come So whatever it is, we deal, we solve, we move forward. If I tell you the stories I've had in ministry, you will be scandalized. Hallelujah. 
Nikiwaambia vitu watu wamekuja kuniambia nafanyanga hivi, utastuka. Utastuka. I have seen things in ministry you have no idea. So tell it you can't surprise me. There is nothing I don't know. Hallelujah. Not nothing I don't but nothing that nothing will surprise me. Amen. Nimefika maximum ya ya surprise. And this person was trying to navigate and hide. No, don't hide, bring it because when it, the light shall shine. When the light shines the devil can't hide. Lucifer hates where there's truth because Lucifer cannot fight truth. I repeat that. Lucifer cannot fight truth. Anywhere there is truth, Lucifer is defeated. Nandokomana, even if you decree out the word of God, if it is truth to you, the devil goes. My daughter last night was watching, is it Super Book or what? And she was watching when the devil was tempting Jesus. I like how they bring it out in the new Super Book. Amen. Super Book in my advance. Eh? Our days in the 2D. Nowadays in the 3D cartoons. Hey! Your, your robot is going to upgrade. <laughs> you got a new software, amen. Hey, nowadays in the Kenya show even na kamota. Nowadays in the market na to have it was like, hey, they make on a touch screen. Jesus is Lord, amen. And I was watching and the part where I was listening to I was listening to her watching it. And the part where the devil is is, is is trying to tell Jesus about what to do. And my mind came to why does Jesus respond with the scripture? Because he responds with the truth. Hallelujah. If you stand in truth, the devil has no chance. I repeat that. If you stand in truth, the devil has no chance. Hallelujah. Three simple principles of decreeing. Number one, there is the thing. The Bible says you must decree a thing. There is the thing. Hallelujah. You must know what is the thing you are decreeing about. What is the thing? God is good. Because you shall decree a thing. So what are you speaking about? What is the matter at hand? If you read 1 John 5, 14 to 15, it says, this is the confidence you have in approaching God. But if you ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know what, he, and we know that he hears whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. And at times people pray, but they don't know the answer when it comes. One of the things I've always said whenever I teach in marriage class is this. I always say in any form of marriage conflict, you want rule number one of conflict in marriage is you must know what you're looking for. Rule number one of conflict in marriage is you must know what you're looking for. For example, if I bring an issue to my wife and we begin to have a conflict, I must be clear what I'm looking for. If I don't know the thing I'm looking for, we'll have what you call an open-ended fight. You know an open-ended fight? Those who are married say amen. An open-ended fight, nile muli fight, muka fight, muka sahau muna fight juya nini, muki maliza mekasirika, but none of you got the answer they were looking for. Muka acha pending muka enda. Hallelujah. Muka wacha time to heal you. God is good. So time healed you. After two days, muka muka ongea, muka pata manza tu kucheka tena. Then you picked up from there, continued. Amen. Then made new problems again. So in the middle, you don't know what you're looking for. Because you begin. But you see, if I bring an issue, I must know what am I bringing. Am I looking for an apology? When she says sorry, I stop. Because now I have what I need, I go. If I don't know, She'll say sorry, ni lime tu. Ah, uh -uh, you know now. Ni ende layer tu. I'm say, I'm sorry. I apologize. I apologize. Ah, I don't think I'm allowed to say omenzoya pia na kunja. Ata wewe wame sa how? Ata wame sa how the other day? I mean, I answer the other day. Which day? To be ender. So pia ki answer. Haji and after nini? After five hours, we are tired, angry, and hungry. There was no solution whatsoever because people don't know. Because at times I might want to bring an issue up in the marriage, not because I want her to apologize. Because I just want to vent. So if I know what I want, I want to vent. We are finished. Good morning. strange. I'm giving you rules of engagement. At times you just want to vent. So at times even you, you don't know you want to vent. I was telling someone the other day, 
But at times you don't want someone to give you a solution. At times you want someone to keep quiet and listen. Isn't it? Yes. <laughs> okay, Jack, yes, yako ni pafu. Wacha ni kujia isa idea congregation, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. So there are times you just want that. And so because you know the thing you want, when you get it, your heart is content. So when I'm telling God, I'm decreeing something about my job, about my marriage, about what, what is the thing? If the answer comes, will I recognize it? Because the answer from God should be above and beyond what you have thought of or imagined. So what did you think of? Because if it comes above and beyond, it's an answer from God. But you see now, if you prayed and there was nothing, you were praying, but there was nothing. You know what happens? You receive above and beyond of nothing. Hallelujah. <laughs> God is good. God is good. Zero times a thousand is good. Welcome to the meeting. So I must know the thing. I must know what does deliverance look like? What does healing look like? What does the breakthrough look like? What does a new job look like? What is the life? What does it look like? Now, I want to bring it into context. Give me James 4.3. It says, when you ask, you don't receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Now, that is the bylaw. But when I'm asking, I know the thing I'm asking for, but also my intention is mounted in God. My intention is pure before God. Hallelujah. See, Mungu dipatie gari ili wanijue. Hallelujah. Number two. Principle number two. God is the power behind the manifestation. That's a very important principle. God is the power behind the manifestation. Isaiah 55 11 says, So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose which I sent it. The power behind your decree is God. The power behind your decree is God. I love that's this is what we are trying to do. That's why we have no fear. Amen, John. Because when, when, when a witch doctor decrees and I decree, we have an understanding. The witch doctor understands the power he's decreeing with and I understand the power that I decree with. Hallelujah. And because I know who God is, then it means if I make a decree, my decree stands because my decree stands because it's in the name of the Lord. Whatever I speak as a child of God is established. It can't go back without being fulfilled. I'm a child of God. Whatever which doctor speaks can fail to be established because it's not based on the word of God. A witch doctor's words are temporary. The word of God is permanent. That is why you can uproot a witch doctor from the roots. But a witch doctor cannot approach you from the roots. Because if you know who you are, Hallelujah. Am I making sense? And there is nothing that the devil fears like a believer who knows who they are. Can you say this for a minute? The devil is a liar. And the devil is cunning and a liar. But the devil is not wise. And in the lies of the devil, remember the devil was the first delusional creature. Hallelujah. Have you ever met this? Did you ever, ever, ever have these friends who always had something that they never had? You know them. Whenever you said you had a car, they had two. Amen. Whenever you said you have a passport, them they said they have the diplomatic passport. Anything... <laughs> And if you are that friend, may the Lord redeem you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, they always had something extra. Always, 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 always. You formed another group of friends to discuss how crazy they are. Hallelujah. 
You know you are wicked when you are in school. God is good. You are wicked. You just lure them in. You want some entertainment. So I can to buy the way by the way. Hey, Niko Nantiango acostates. Alin to me a view to an answer. Ata Mimi. There's a guy, Ule Jamawa Gym, you remember? There's a guy who used to go to the gym. He had that demon. Everything you say, he had something. So we are doing boxing, and I'm talking about Anthony Joshua. I'm saying Anthony Joshua comes from what for Mimi. He says, ah, yeah. He's my bro's neighbor. If you are to ah, he's my bro's neighbor, like opposite, opposite where, where the flat my bro stays, opposite and Rachel stays there. Okay, to go busy in a haman. I don't know what you are talking about again. So I was talking about getting a car or something. I said, ah, we can't. I know I can talk to my to, 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 to my bro. He has an auction. Where? He, now your bro has an auction in London, but he's Anthony Joshua's neighbor in uh, Watford. Then I began talking about a place on Langata Road that, that repairs and modifies uh, Mercedes Benz. So my brother-in-law normally goes there. He knew the place. So I was telling him about the place. He jumps in. That place, it's owned by my bro. Kutokeo siku mina haman, ale kwa nakuja tunayenda, tutananza kwa busy. Tunayenda, tukananza kumeba. This, I thought this problem ended in, in high school. Ni mtu mzima, ni mtu mzima. Fully grown. Tukanda kumhepa na haman daily. Hallelujah. Now, the devil was the first delusional person. Because the devil looked at God and the devil thought he could rise and be God. So the devil is a liar by nature. Amen. He's a liar by? By nature. So nothing that comes from the lips of Lucifer can be established because it's a lie. Hallelujah. Because it's a, it's a lie. That is why we rebuke diseases. That's why we break limitations. Because they are all lies. Are we together? God is good. Mark 11, 22 says this. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself to the sea and does not doubt in their heart but believes what they say will happen, it shall be done for them. So principle number two is God is the power behind the declaration. Number three. Principle number three is the light of God is superior to darkness. The light of God is superior to darkness. What does superior mean? Superior means good. How can I define Superior means superior. So when I'm making a decree, Job says, decree a thing shall be established. I remember there's a thing. Number one, I remember that the power behind it is God. And number three, the superior light of God. Hallelujah. The, the, the light of God is superior to darkness. Give me John 1.5. The light shines in darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Present continuous. Has not and will not. So the power of God is always superior. The Bible calls him the father of spirits. Anything that is a spirit, anything that is a spirit was made by God. It is under the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me Psalms 119, 105. It says, your word is a lamp, on my, a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. So when you decree three principles, what is the thing you are decreeing? Which is the power that is moving it? And that power is superior. Are we together? God is good. Ask this question on your notes. Who can decree? Who can decree? Not everyone can decree. Who can decree? Only a person in authority. Only a person in authority. A king is the only one that can decree. That is why it was necessary for Jesus to adopt you and I into the family of God. Are you together? That is why he had to adopt us. When he says, I've given you authority, he's saying this authority is just not, it's not, it's not authority. I have also adopted you. Meaning as a king, you can make a decree. Only a king can make a decree. 
and a king in authority. Can I tell you something? When they were in Babylon, weren't their kings born from the house of Jerusalem? There. But what could they do? Have you read the book of kings? What did they used to do when they captured kings? Like when they captured them and took them to Babylon. What did they do to the king who was in power? They cut his thumbs and they cut his big toe. That everyone will know when they look at the four fingers, they will know this was a king. He is no longer in authority. So, how is he make decree? Family end. Because Kumbuka. You remember? The seal of the king is in the thumb. Hallelujah. The holding of the scepter is in the thumb. Hallelujah. So, when they cut, everyone in the prison would look and know the guy with four fingers used to be a king. Then, whatever happened to their children is a different story for history. So, there was a king with them. While they are laboring in Babylon, there was a king among them. But not in authority. Now this is what the devil does to believers. The devil lies to you, you have no authority. So now you end up serving like a slave in the kingdom of God. Am I talking to somebody? The devil lies, you have no authority. So imagine the king of Israel is there and is looking at everyone one angaliana if you want it. Because, the, because what has happened to him is that he was born a king. The blood flowing within him is the blood of a king. His name and lineage is of a king. He can be traced back, but authority has been taken. So the one who can decree, why can't that king rise and tell people, let's go back home? Why is he so serious? It's because now I'm in a place in the spirit whereby I have a glimpse of who I am, but my reality has changed my position. I cannot decree anything anymore. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Give me First Peter 2.9. This is who you are and that's why you will decree today in the name of Jesus. The Bible says you are what? A chosen, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. In this text, we understand those and who we are in the new kingdom. Number one, write this down. You are a royal priesthood. Key points. One, I am a royal priesthood. Meaning I am a king and a priest. You are a king and a priest. Meaning you have authority of royalty. You have authority of royalty. And the anointing of the presence of God. You have the authority of royalty and the authority of the presence of God. Are we together? That is why we worship. The worship we bring to God is our priesthood. The praise we sing is our priesthood. Adoring God is our priesthood. When the priesthood rises, the power of the king flows. Are we together? So many believers want to begin to decree, I am a king. No, 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 no. It is the priesthood that produces the power of the king. So the more I'm in priesthood, the more I spend time in worship, the more I spend time in, in, in intercession, the more I spend time in prayer, the more I'm spending time, the oil begins to flow. When the oil flows, when I stand as a king, I'm able to decree. Nanishika. That is why there are times in prayer Uneza worship, uombe, uombe, ulale, ulie, ulie, ulie. That is your priesthood. The sacrifice on the altar. Then at some point, the Lord tells you, now stand up, make a decree. I don't know if you've ever seen at times, I may lie down. I may lie down here. I may be, I may break down. I may be in tears or whatever. It is me offering my offering to the Father. Then he tells me, now stand up. Now begin to decree. Now begin to lay hands. Now begin to do this. What is that? It is the, priest, the, the kingship is powered by the priesthood. Are we together? Number two, he says you are a chosen gene, gene, generation. Meaning you are chosen for a specific reason to represent God. 
you are chosen for a specific reason. Meaning everything that is happening in your life is out of God's choice. You are chosen by God. We at times we discover our calling late. But the devil knew you are called. God knew you were called from the very beginning. My wife asked me a question a few weeks ago and asked me why did the devil want to kill the children when they were below two years? Amen. And we began to discuss about it. And she said something very beautiful. She said, the devil does not see a child. Because in the spirit, you're not a child. Vilunangalia even a macho. Sunangalia the same thing. I am the same person. Even as your birthday changes. The only thing that changes is when you jump on a realize, mama, eh, kama, kama goti, hakako vile kalikuwa kitambu. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> that, that's the only thing that changes. But your outlook of life, you are you. Do you remember, you know, who on your birthday do you feel as though something has changed? In fact, if you are not told it is your birthday, would you even know? You don't feel that you learn me scare. Hey. Kuna kitu may change. Ah, pana. When you let through, hallelujah. If you forget to remember, your birthday comes and goes. There's nothing sublime that happens. You won't wake up on your birthday, find that your hair has grown longer. Hallelujah. Ama kuna glow kwa mkono. Ah, ah, uko tu, tewewe. As is. The spirit doesn't grow old. So when the devil sees when you are born, remember, I need to teach you something very important, biblically. Indo waganga wamechukua kwa ita nyota. But shungeju ya nyota. When angels appeared, how did people know they were angels? Eh? There was there was light. The light that was shining from the angels is what made them to be known. Because the angels have no flesh. How would you know a spirit? No, just generally. Okay, so our darkness is the point here. Are you making sense? Because if I want to pray for, for my wife here, when I look in the spirit, I look at her image in the spirit and see two things. There's a level of light I'll see or a level of darkness. That's how we know there's a wrong presence. That's why someone would come for prayers and return from my apakuna darkness. Then, of course, there are those who are talking about concealing. Something stands between you can't see. It hides you can't see. Already that's a red flag in spiritual things. So the angels have no flesh. But people knew they were there. Because the light shone. So how do you know a spirit? The angel, even though you see the wings, they are not tangible. Hallelujah. You just see light. Am I making sense? So, every grace... And every anointing, hallelujah, in the spiritual realm, when the Lord releases you and you're born in the spiritual realm, hallelujah, what happened? You've heard scientists saying this. The time that they did the research and looked at the time when, 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 when fertilization takes place. You've seen that research. They say there's always a spark of light in that moment. I'm going to mean for your research again. Okay. Alex, you Please. <laughs> the normal is at the point of fertilization like this, it is light. Hallelujah. He's the father. You know, now, now I, I want you, to, I want you to, to get this. Why the devil is very, is, is very crazy. So, when Haman is born, demons don't identify Haman by anything else. From the womb of his mother, they look. And what they look when they see they see the mother's light in the spirit and they see Haman's light. Now, the type of light that is shining in Haman determines his rank in the kingdom, determines his assignment in the kingdom. Walk with me, please. So when uh, I enter into a devil worshiper's den or I enter into a place I'm not supposed to be, when I enter, the thing that the spiritual person will see, they'll see light. Now, the light they see is covered in the seven anointings. 
not to be taught today. But it's covered in the seven anointings. One of the seven anointings, I'll give an example of the relevance of now, is the anointing for wealth. Are you getting? The anointing for wealth. So the moment you enter into a group and they tell you, come join this chama, come join this chama, ask yourself a few questions. Why do they want me? Kablo seme, wana nipendanga tu. Wana nitanga tu, wana nipenda. I just have favor. Chunguza. So someone has looked at you and seen Berlin has the anointing to be a distributor of wealth. We need on our side. That's why you find that there are things you go through, Gidi. Not because of anything else. The devil saw your rank and the devil saw your calling. What is the name? I'll tell you why. Again, it's not to be taught today, but I'm in a good mood. He's called Lucifer, the bringer of light. Lucifer understands everything about light. Remember, all of the stones minus two were on him. Each stone carried a different kind of light. They were on him. He's the bringer of light. He's the carrier of light. He's the only one who walked on the stones of God. So Lucifer understood destiny. Hallelujah. He understood destiny. He understands destiny by seeing it. That's why Lucifer never attacks useless people. How does he pick them out? He's a spirit. He doesn't wait for you. Lucifer won't wait for the day I'll be waiting. At the corner, I come to at the street, come corner up and I come back. My my foot up, Anna. Uli pangiwa he kita hambo. Some of you ask your parents how your day of birth was. At the corner, we used to go to Chana Nai. Wa Chana ne usiku. Oi je je wa Chana. Everything that could go wrong would have gone wrong. Why? The devil looked and the demon checked and checked and said, no, this mother is carrying so and so. But there are people even when the devil is fighting the womb. He's not fighting the womb because of anything. But the devil understands from experience and from knowledge. He knows that there are specific people who are designed to carry mighty people of God. And he understands this womb is to carry a mighty person of God. We must close it. Because the anointing on this person's life, she is a mother of a great person. Are we, are we together? So you, you, can be, you can be a mother of a Samson and the enemy is tying your womb simply because a Samson is to come through you. So the enemy understands light. He knows light. The same way in deliverance, when I look at Oliver, look at her and what I see, I've told some of you this before, but when I pray for you, I don't see you physically, I see you in the spirit. And I know right now where Lucy is, is she's in a bad place. How do I know? It's because when I look at the spirit, I look at the thing that is shining in hand. I'm like, no, kuna kitu imeingia. Si ya kawaida. Hakuna vibebeo. God is good. <laughs> so when I look, I see. So if you are spiritual, you stand and you look at me, oh, something is wrong. If I look at Havana, kuna kitu, this is a wrong spirit. Something is here that is not right. At times, even before you discern it, because there are those that have makazi chokozwe. There are demons you will not feel until they are disturbed. You see them. That's why at times you'd see, I might lay hands on someone and I change my tone because of what I've seen. I've seen a presence and I know the rank of that demon. I know this kind of demon is of a higher rank. This is there. So when the devil sees, he knows Joanna is of this rank. What do I need to do? Watch at Tumvuruge. So Joanna Kizunguka Kipitia Vitu Nini, she gave her testimony here. The powerful testimony. Everything she was battling. At that time, she was fighting for her life. But she didn't know that in the spiritual realm, the enemy had seen what God had put in her. He was seeing the glow. He was seeing the rank, the anointing. He knew what she was going to do. He knows these kind of people, I've seen them before. I know what they normally do. So the devil knows you are going to fight. So as she's fighting, saying, no, we are fighting for destiny. While she's fighting for life, the Lord is saying, no, I'm fighting for your destiny. There's a difference of how God fights. Am I talking to somebody? That's why the enemy knows. That's your friend that those who have a call, maybe have an anointing to make wealth, to be distributors of wealth, have fought most in their, in their finances. Have fought most in their businesses. Why? Because the enemy knows. But if such a person goes and joins a devil worshiper tomorrow, they'll have billions. Because the devil says, now they are working for me. I, I, they, they owe me something. So nothing happens by mistake. Please tell me you've learned something. Have you learned something? Yes. He was called the bringer of light. So he understood and knows the science of every light that shines in an individual. So when the enemy is attacking me, he knows. 
And I've done ministry for long. There are times we have done deliverance and we have summoned him. Lucifer himself. There are times I'm praying for someone, I summoned him wherever he was. Because he's not omnipresent. I told him, come manifest here. I want to know what your agenda is. And he came. Na hakuna mtu hana aibu kama Lucifer. Lucifer anafika pale na anza mimi hata sijui mnanitia nini. Lazima sana hata sijui mnanitia nini. Hata sijui mnanitia hata sijui mnanitia. And quickly mkimkona anaruka. Anasema hata mimi hii story by the hata si yangu. Nyi dilini na huyu. The guy goes. Niacheni. And whenever you are dealing with transactions even in the ocean to remove souls and liberate souls, call him directly. He knows rank. He knows when he sees light. When the demons saw Jesus, they didn't see a Jew. They never saw a Jew. They are spirits. Spirits don't see your nose and your body. Spirits see your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The common said Danganyi wati wachawi wa Africa peke yake hapana. Wazungu wana mapepo zingine hata achana nazo. That's not for today. I can be cancelled. God is good. You are a chosen generation. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Number three, you are a holy nation, meaning you have been set apart by God. You have been set apart by God. Holy nation, these are believers set apart to live holy and righteous lives, reflecting God's character. So I'm talking about the ones who can decree. A royal priesthood, they are already pre-chosen, they are a holy nation. And number four, to proclaim God's what? Praises. This is 1 Peter 2.9. To show forth the praises of him. I repeat. Amen. The key points of 1 Peter 2.9 is that you're a royal priesthood. Number one, the priesthood powers the kingship. Number two, you are chosen by God. As I talked about light. Number three, you are a holy nation. Meaning you have been set apart. Your life is not like others. And why you are set apart is to proclaim God's praises. We are together now. That's First Peter 2, 1 to 9. So anyone with the power to decree is supposed to proclaim the praise of God. Hallelujah. Why? Because we know when we decree, we decree in the power of God. I know when I speak a decree, I speak in the power of God. I'm representing God. Hallelujah. I'm representing who? God. And so I must understand that anything I'm saying, I represent God. Remember that song by R. Kelly? I believe I can fly. Mukadanganyot in the gospel. Eh? Mulo Zindio. Langanyan in the gospel. I believe I can fly. Listen to the words he says at the end. I believe in me. He finishes by saying, I believe in me. So when he's saying, I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. He's making a declaration, making a declaration, but you see, only a royal priesthood can make a declaration because the declaration will praise God. He is saying, I believe in me. God is good. God is. I could not have been There are people that have scandalized here. Hallelujah. I could not have been scandalized here. If I sit here and teach you as someone on music, you'll be, you'll, you'll be surprised. I, will, I, I can ruin your life. God is good. I, you can be closing your ears. God is good. Uh, TikTok, Instagram, Hizo. Don't know Hallelujah. So while you are watching that clip for two minutes, Tupac ameimba. You think it is harmless. So you jaribu go on in the Holy Ghost. Jaribu. There's always a test. Just try see. Someone told me something powerful. I remember that in my, in my page, I was advertising my things and I used to put other songs. But I realized, no, I'm going to put gospel music. The world will tell you, if you put gospel music, you will not get customers. That is a lie. It is telling us that the devil is the one who gives customers. That's a lie. It is God who brings customers. Amen. Yes. 
But hapo tunashikiwa anga Instagram nini hapo ndio unashikiwa. Ushaicheza tu kasikia tu ngome imeanza hapo. 50 cent na kuwahi tu pap. Jaribu ku professor itum 2 minutes later. Jaribu. Eh hey, acha nyamaze. Hiyo music nimeenda sana. Eh hey, acha nihubirie acha nikuje hapa kwako. Eh hey, hallelujah. I'm telling you the truth but I'm not judging anyone. I'm just letting you know. But music is that powerful. That's why people saying, I believe I can fly. I believe I, can. I believe because someone said it was gospel and we never listened to the words. We said it's gospel. And we decreed we can fly. How many of you flew? You have a chance drinking Red Bull. <laughs> God is good. Yes. How many? But because a decree can only be made by a royal priesthood. Only set apart. And so, and I'll tell you something. I don't want to go here today. I'm in a different mood. But if you know you are set apart, you begin to position your things to be set apart. Everything around you begins to think I'm set apart. I'm set apart. I'm set apart. Everything around you begins to work with I'm set apart. You begin to be keen. My daughter yesterday was telling me something. She's been telling me, Daddy, I want to walk in the spirit. I want to walk in the spirit. So I found her listening to this song. I'm a soldier in the battle of Hey. Haliimba, naimba, naimba. Now even she's singing what the guy is saying. Yeah, naimba, yo. The guy sings in, in uh, tongues. She's singing in tongues now. With, 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 and, 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 and she told me, wow. I, I, I'm here and I feel something. So I feel something. I don't understand what I feel, but I feel something. I told her, listen. As a believer, you must know what enters here. What enters here powers a lot in your faith. So if you want to walk in the spirit, you have to be keen about what enters here and what enters here. I told her that is the doorway to your soul. But there are times when God speaks, we wonder, ni mungu wa liongea, ama ni mini liongea. But you huko ndani kwa hiyo kwelele yote, kuna 50 cent time ongea. Mimi ni old school, hallelujah. I don't know the new singers. It just tells you when I got born again, I stopped listening. Mimi mi retire kwa 50 cent, hallelujah. That's why I retired from God is good. I don't know the new ones, amen. Hasi wajui, by the way. Now since, si pwandi matatu squeeze it, the better. Hey, glory to God. I used to be scandalized, hey. He's in a TV mbaka wapi na sama Jesus Lord. TV me kueka hapo. Hallelujah. <laughs> God is good. I was saying you have to be keen what you feed. It's very important. And the more you realize that what I feed powers my decree. Can I making sense? What I feed powers my decree. You have to have a feeding system. But when you stand to decree, you quickly go to the place I am a royal priesthood. Devil come out. Door open. Father, what is your plan for my life? Quickly you get in line. But you see now, it's in a very sneakish way. Hallelujah. Nowadays, if you listen to our children, they don't know new songs because they went to YouTube to see it being launched. Their new song found them on TikTok. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Utakatu kidogo itacheza, icheze, icheze, icheze tu. Siku moja unajipata kwa bafu, unaimba wimbo ingine. Hallelujah. Nimekuja sana Lucy. Ama nirudi. Nirivance. So, our work is to praise God. Amen. I'm just talking about feeding. Hallelujah. Well, I'm saying this because most of you here are entering into a space in your spirit where the Lord is showing you a lot of things. And I'm trying to just teach you how you will see more and how you will hear more. That's what I'm just trying to teach I'm making sense. At times, even when, before you sleep, I do this every other time. I just put headphones and just play worship. Or at times, I just pick a worship that has just someone praying in tongues. I just pray with them in tongues until I black out. And every time I do that, portals open in the spirit. And the Lord gives me a lot of downloads such nights. Many things I just get from the Holy Spirit. Just many things. And I know whenever, even when my mind is extremely tired, I always ensure when I sleep, the thing that goes through my ears is worship because it goes and cleans my soul, all the debris, the old that nonsense, metoka, that now the Lord is, it releases. And you find the Lord will, will clean up at about 354 thereabout. You're about to wake up. The downloads begin. The downloads begin. Hallelujah. It's something just because at times, you know, we, we, we take it, it's a small thing. 
But we forget that our soul opens. Then when you go to sleep, your soul closes. When it closes now, it begins to transact based on the information it has been given. Can I throw a stone to a police station? The spirit of anything created follows the one who created it. Anything, Simon has here creators, creators, creators. Dio, creatini. Listen, the spirit of an artist follows their work. So while you are there watching it harmlessly, the spirit, the reason why it was created has to be planted in you. The reason why it was made must be planted in you. So when you sleep, you close your eyes. It begins to transact in you. In answer to fanya kazi. That's why at times you sleep, you wake up, you sleep, you wake up like you've never slept. Hallelujah. Because the one who did the work does not sleep. And their spirit is people must stay awake watching me till morning. Now God Almighty. In your school of intercession, why am I teaching it now? Hallelujah. I'm honest, I'm, I'm, I'm not telling you one. To, I'm just making you to be aware. Have knowledge. Amen. Please, I'm not saying I'm judging what you watch, what you want to watch, listen to what you want. I'm just telling you, knowledge is power. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Knowledge is power. You must be keen. You must know. But there are times when you look at something, question yourself, what was the spirit behind it? What was the spirit behind the song? What was the spirit behind the video? What's the spirit behind it? Now, if you spend your time plugged with the Holy Ghost, you will watch a video one, two, three seconds and you remove it. Hallelujah. Tokomana, some of us may think of sports. Not the worst thing in sports in the red card. Jack, you may be curious. You may be Hallelujah. I'm just telling you, God is good. Just be aware. I'm just saying, be a, be aware. Be a, be aware. Amen. Be aware. Be aware of the things, the songs, whatever is being said. Be aware. Just tell the Holy Ghost, help me to see. We live in a world where you'll have to see. We live in a world where someone will send you a video on TikTok, they'll send you something to follow. We live in that world right now. Amen. That's the world we live in. You can't run away. You'll find it. Would you try TikTok? TikTok finds you. My mother's on TikTok. My mother is in TikTok. She's almost 80. I got TikTok. She sends me videos. But here I got my someone too. But you see, it finds you. So when you are in the Holy Ghost, you will discern and be like, this one is not right. I won't watch this. This one, fine. I'll watch and laugh. It's okay. This one, you begin to discern the things that are consumable and not consumable. Have I gone too far with that information? Any more idea? Good. Now, we are supposed to praise God and finish. When you are a royal priesthood in authority, why he says you'd praise God? It's because of who God is to you. The power that moves in your decree is the power of God. The power that moves in your decree is the power of God. So who is God to you? Which God is being lifted when you decree? Number one, you praise God as a path maker. Maker 2.13. You praise him as a path maker. Maker 2.13. Hallelujah. The breaker has come up before them. They have broken up and have passed through the gate and are gone out by it and their king shall pass before them and the Lord on the head, on the head of them. So your decree is praising God as your path maker. So every decree I make, God, you're my path maker. Hallelujah. Milisema, we owe the devil nothing. Every door that has been opened in our lives has been opened by who? By God. No one opened that door. It is God. Number two, we praise God because God breaks through limitations. So my decree, I understand that my God breaks through limitations. When I make a decree, my God breaks through all limitations. Give me Isaiah 45 two. It says, I'll go before you and I'll make crooked places straight. Hallelujah. God overcomes any limitation. 
if they are imposed by the enemy, if they are imposed by circumstances, if they are imposed by personal weaknesses, it doesn't matter. Any decree you make, you make knowing your decree is praising the God who breaks limitations. Hallelujah. There is no limitation in your life that God cannot break. Hallelujah. Number three, we are praising God because God's timing, God's timing is everything in our breakthrough. God's timing is everything in our breakthrough. So we are speaking our word for a breakthrough, but I know that my breakthrough is coming because God's timing, hallelujah, God is good. Please, Mwamba and Amimi, our songs to come out, hallelujah. Ile shetani na jaribu kujishika, ikufe. Ani mwana atai sitwa kwa njia ikufe tu. Ni mwana atai sitwa kwa njia ikufe tu. Ni mwana Yes, it just dies. Amen. Yes, those songs need to come out. Hallelujah. I've been feeling so much. This is my time. I've just been feeling that this is where I am right now. Hallelujah. God's timing is Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, He has made everything beautiful in his, in its time. Number four. God breaks through for his people. God breaks through for his people. So when I release a word I know, when I decree I know, God breaks through for me. Isaiah 61.1 Isaiah 61.1 It says to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. God breaks through for his people. God breaks through for me. It is personal. Go together. I'll teach about breakthroughs. God willing, I think if I look at my notes, I think it should be next week. Number five, God is a warrior. So my decree is praising God with the understanding that God is a warrior. The Bible says God fights as a warrior for his people. Give me Exodus 15.3. It says, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Give me NIV. NIV me kuja sana. Kona mungu kama na yombe. NIV. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Hey! Munasikia yo. The Lord is? The Lord is a warrior. He is a man of war. And the Lord never loses any battle. In the name of Jesus. He can never lose. He shall never lose. He cannot lose. God is the only person in history who has already spoken about how his enemy will lose. Is that powerful? God is the only one who has actually documented openly to his enemies. This is how you end. You know, nothing was as bad as when you go for boxing. When a fighter or another fighter, I'll knock you out in the second round. Second round, I'll knock you out. You know that used to enter in someone's head. Second round, you are thinking, actually, he might knock me out. Now, it is here. It is here. There's nothing as powerful as someone telling you, I finish you tomorrow. Hallelujah. But I tell you today, no witch, no witch doctor has the power to speak over your life about when you die in the name of Jesus. They have no jurisdictional authority. Today, we are going to cancel these things people have said over your life until your business won't thrive. They said as who? As who? As who? Eh? Hi, number six. God leads his people into new territory. Isaiah 43, 19. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the, in, the, in the wasteland. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wastelands. So when I make my decree, I know that the Lord is leading me into what? New territory. And that's why I praise. And number seven. The Lord is always, always 
releasing a breakthrough. The Lord is always releasing a breakthrough. In English I'm saying, breakthroughs are a continuous experience for a child of God. Breakthroughs are a continuous experience. Every day in your life as a Christian is a day of breakthrough. Every minute is a minute of breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is an, go, it's an ongoing process. Every day I have a breakthrough. When I go to bed, I have a breakthrough. When I wake up, I have a breakthrough. When you go to work, you have a breakthrough. In your finances, you have a breakthrough. Everywhere in your life, breakthrough is a continuous process. Because Philippians 1, 6 says what? It says what? He who began the good works in my life shall do what? Shall bring them to? Completion. He that began the good works will bring them to completion. So every day, Berlin, you have a breakthrough. Every moment you have a breakthrough. So when I'm decreeing, I'm decreeing daily because I know daily I have a breakthrough of some kind. Now here's the thing. That is the God we are praising. He's a warrior. He makes a way. Hallelujah. He brings things to completion. But here's a beautiful thing. He lives in you. You're a carrier of God. Meaning every day, that whole thing is with you. Hey, she come on and deliver. Me not talk a word to in Africa, man, who took on and give mahali hivi. People just live. See, you wanna go to Kia? You wanna chomeka? Wanna chomeka? Wanna talk at one, talk at one, but at least one end at two. Because you know who you carry. Hallelujah. Una in Kia too. No, who you cook salami and a quama. God is good. I'm serious. Una chora line chini tu unaingia mahali unafaa tu line hivi. Nasema waganga wote hawapiti hapa leo. Na unasimama tu. You tell us kumbe your auntie was one of them. Go hallelujah. God is good. <laughs> Amen. Even in Afakua, it must come to a place when someone is greeting you with demonic powers. Now mshike na udisan demonic powers. Pia we una mshika. Una muangalia. Hallelujah. Una muangalia. Una kifanya. Jua na jua kenyo umetuma. Na ongelesha mutu. Mwisi yo gupangu salamia na wachavi. Tusalamiane. Tusalamiane. My presence for which doctor is bad luck. Hallelujah. A which doctor must come to a place mumbi. Wewe ni nooks. Wewe ni nooks. Akifika mahali yani you are a liability to the to the witch doctor if someone anaza mustaji wewe unataka kuniambia bini nini hapana you will spoil my business bila kwa jina pale pale pepe nini that's where we should get to amen mtu akisema tu hapa akiingia tu hivi kwa nyumba yako anakaa anajua hapa kamenihumania what i was bringing i can't leave here but what is here i will carry with me and where I take it, it is a liability. Unasikia mtu anasema mtu atasa kuka. Hata nilikuwa na haraka. Nilikuwa na haraka. Unasema ulikuwa na haraka. Utaki uka. Wacha hata nikupe maji. Utaki maji. Wacha nikupe maji. Kunywa tu maji. Unachukua maji tamaru blood of Jesus. Mungu anataka mtu kuanzia saa hii mpaka afike nyumbani. Diarrhea, 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 diarrhea. Kuna kitu kingine. Diarrhea tu. Asumbuke hii tumbo mpaka ajue hapa swai rudi. Asumbuke tu akikunywa tu maji. Ai. Ai, mwambie tu basi. Ulikuwa unaenda hivi wewe, enda. Because we know who we are. <laughs> I'm serious. The Lord taught me something powerful. In Acts chapter 5. You know it's in Acts chapter 5. The story of Ananias and Sapphira. And I asked God what happened here. The Lord told me you have to recognize Peter was making an apostolic decree. And I said this, I'll teach someone here. Those who are calling you in business, wale wana kuibia pesa kwa biashara. That anointing Peter had in Acts chapter 5, may you receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen! Peter alisema muna nikon. Hey! Even the feet that carried your husband have not finished drying up. Chini. And that is an apostolic decree. It's in the Bible. Me, I'm reading the Bible. Me, I'm reading the Bible. 
Because I realized something. But as a believer, I said on, on Friday, you are a Christian. We said Christian is what? Belonging to the anointed one. Because Christ is anointed. So if I'm a follower of Christ, then I have to have a level of anointing. There must be evidence. Hallelujah. There must be evidence. In a far when someone presents your picture to a witch doctor, the witch doctor moves. And I say, well, now you have exposed me. Now I'm exposed. They will finish me. In a far when unambiwa kuna meetings of a ganga who want to be with you, you tell them, by the way, nakuja. I'm coming. When is the meeting? I'm coming. Because what they rely on? Fear. Fear. When they know you are afraid, they have power. I'm coming. When are you meeting? When? When? When are you meeting? When? I'm coming. Ready. Who to scare themselves? Because they themselves, remember, aren't you not something spiritually? Which doctors hide? People who visit which doctors are the ones who appear. Can I say that again? Which doctors hide? People who visit with doctors are the ones who are seen. Me no find deliverance for mingi. Una shikanga mganga, mganga anasema, "Eh, ye ndo alikuja." Mi hata siwajui mimi sina shida na wewe by the way. I'm serious. Una shika mganga, una mshika anamwambia, "Anasema, "Eh, eh, please. Mi alikuja nikampea supu." Sikujua ni wewe anatafuta. Ningejua ni wewe atasingempea. Please deal na yeye. Mimi tu ni mimi niko biashara. So people who go to witches are the ones we see. That auntie you see, that cousin you see, are the ones you see walking. They're the ones who tell you, I'll be with you, I'll finish you. The ones who visit. The witches never appear physically. So when they tell you and you tell them I'm coming, they have to go back to the witch doctor. And tell the witch doctor, but then Mumbi is coming next week. Tell them, Mumbi is coming. You know who Mumbi is? You're on your own. That is why you find when you go, they run. Because they were never reinforced. You have Jesus in you. You have God in you. And God says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Give me Hebrews. We finish with Hebrews and we pray. I want us to read this because you know we are normally caught up by the enemy with greed and all those things. Let's read this. Hallelujah. Let's go. Eh? Let. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want you to read from I will never with confidence that is God telling you this. Make that declaration right now. That's your first decree. Let's decree. I That is the confidence of scripture. Now, do I tell you how I normally read this text? This is how I read it. Whenever anything wants to go wrong in my life, this is how Victor reads it. I say, Father, you said. He has said. I say, Father, you said. You will never, under any circumstance, desert me, nor give me up, nor leave me without your support, nor will you in any degree leave me helpless, nor will you forsake me or let me down or relax your hold on me. Assuredly, Father, you will never. That is what I say. I don't believe in my life God can leave me. Hallelujah. I know God is with me. I am with God. There is something I know for sure. I don't even have to be preached to. God will not leave me. God cannot leave me. He cannot abandon me. Everywhere I go, God is there. When I sit, he is there. When I sleep, he is there. So I laugh when the devil tries to touch me. Because when he touches me, he is touching God. Because God lives in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there are times to tell God, I am your temple. Defend your temple. Amen. I am your temple. Defend your temple. I am your dwelling place. 
Fight for your dwelling place. He will never leave you nor forsake you. No matter what you do. No one should lie to you that your life is beyond God. God is with you. Let us pray.